ANA's World's Fair of Money is usually an unmissable event on the annual numismatic calendar, but the 2019 US coin signature auction by Heritage was just truly an embarrassment of riches, with the list of exceedingly rare and fascinating coins being seemingly endless. In total, the auction managed to raise over $32 million, and the headline of this auction has to be the stunning 1837 proof Alter Eagle coin, one of only four such coins known to exist today. The mintages for these early proof coins were never officially recorded by the US Mint and were struck largely on an ad hoc basis. Without going into too much detail, as I've already made a video specifically about this coin itself, you can watch that now by clicking on the little I on the top right hand side of your screen now if you want. Suffice to say that there are only four of these coins known to exist today, with the original mintage thought not to have been vastly greater than that. Of those, this is the absolute finest at a grade of proof 66 deep cameo from PCGS. By auction's close, this coin had sold for $576,000. And onto another rare gold coin, but this time the 1842 Proof Eagle coin. Again, the exact mintage figure is not known, but it is estimated to be no higher than 8 examples. Today we know of 6 coins like this that have an established provenance, but these numbers alone do not tell the full story. To sum things up as concisely as possible. Of the six coins that are known, one is in the Harry W. Bass Core Collection at the ANA's Money Museum, two coins are at the National Numismatic Collection at the Smithsonian, talk about an embarrassment of riches, a fourth coin graded PCGS Proof 63 was stolen in 2007 and has never been recovered, and a fifth coin was last seen in Paris in 1977. Honestly, no idea what happened to that one, leaving in effect only this coin, the Pittman example, as the sole coin available to collectors. And who knows how many years will pass before this is officially offered for sale again. The Proof 64 Deep Cameo coin raised $480,000 at the auction. The 1907 Wire Rim Indian Head Gold Eagle is one of those unique examples that just you can't help but fall in love with. To quote the ANA secretary Howard Wood's review from the December 1907 issue of the Numismatist, the coin is a magnificent conception throughout, simple in its aspect but grand in its dignity, and will surely find its place in the front ranks with the best coins of the age. And indeed, so it has, although not nearly as scarce as the prior two coins discussed. In in fact, a total of 542 coins were minted, with 70 again being melted down after they had remained unsold by 1915, leaving in effect a total mintage of 472 coins. Augustus St. Gordon's died just a short while after he handed the designs over to the mint and never saw these coins enter circulation. In his 1908 annual report, Treasury Secretary George B. Cordley wrote, the execution of these designs for these coins was the last effort of a great American sculptor and the crowning work of a notable career. The astounding grade of MS-68 from NGC places this coin as only the second finest in the population report and the single finest coin ever offered at public auction, where it closed for $432,000. When the San Francisco Mint opened for business in 1854 and started accepting gold deposits, it quickly became the destination of choice for many in the gold rush, and as a result, gold deposits at the New Orleans Mint plummeted and mintage figures soon dwindled alongside. From mintage figures that numbered literally in the hundreds of thousands just a few years earlier, by the time 1856 came around, only 2,250 
50 double eagle coins were struck, most of which were lost to history as today researchers believe that no more than around 35 or so coins may have survived. Only 25 such coins can definitively be traced. Of those, this coin is graded AU50 by NGC and it managed to close for $408,000. The Stella is a curious coin to be sure. While in the strictest sense a pattern coin, the popularity of this piece has grown over the years to the point where it is considered as an essential part of a high level typeset. Of the two designs, there is no doubt that the coiled hair version designed by Charles Morgan is the scarcer, with an estimated mintage of perhaps less than 20 coins and around 12 to 14 coins known to today compared to the several hundred of the flowing hair type. It is easy to understand why this coin is the more desirable of the two. This 1879 $4 coiled hair Stella was graded by NGC as proof 63 and passed under the auctioneer's gavel for $336,000. Woven into the numismatic legend is a story of the 1884 and 1885 trade dollars, but at least as it pertains specifically to the 1884 coin, these legends are largely akin to campfire stories, often retold and very entertaining, albeit factually scant and oftentimes mostly nonsense. The rumor that these coins were struck clandestinely is quite simply not supported by any facts. To that point, the die record book as kept by the foreman of the die maker's room at the Philadelphia Mint clearly records a single obverse and reverse die being prepared for the proof 1884 trade dollar on January the 3rd, 1884. Those were then soon transferred to the coining department and according to the annual report of the director of the mint, there were 264 proof trade dollars struck in 1884. Shortly afterwards, the treasury sent orders to the mint forbidding the production of proof trade dollars for sale to collectors. But not before 10 examples escaped the mint through legal means, leaving only 254 coins to be destroyed. The story does go on, and yes, it's far more complicated than just described here, but basically that accounts for the 10 examples that we know of today, of which this is the former Norweb specimen and is graded as proof 63 by PCGS. $336,000 was the closing price for this coin. And while we're describing exceedingly rare US Mint coins, then the 1870s Seated Liberty dollar coin cannot be left out, with only 9 examples that are known today. A bit of a numismatic mystery to be sure, although Nancy Oliver and Richard Kelly puts forward a very compelling argument in the saga of the 1870s silver dollar as published in 2005. To grossly oversimplify things, these coins appear to have been struck specifically for presentation purposes at the groundbreaking ceremony of the new mint building on 5th and Mission Streets in San Francisco. One such coin is actually still rumored to be in the cornerstone of that same building today. This coin was authenticated by NGC at XF45 and sold on its turn for $324,000. And then for something a little bit more obscure, a Higley copper, supposedly a unique example dated from around 1737 to 1739. Now, I'll freely admit that I don't really know too much about the Higley copper coins other than, you know, the broad strokes of the story in general. Oh, and um, on that topic, if anyone knows of any good books on the subject, please let me know in the comment section below. I really appreciate that. So this coin has the inscription, the wheel spelled W-H-E-E-L-E -E, goes around with a 12 spoked wheel on the obverse and the now rather badly worn broad axe and the inscription J cut my way through on the reverse certified by NGC as VF30. The coin sold for $312,000.
I would be completely remiss if I didn't mention one of the world's most famous era coins and the fact that this coin is so far down on this list just goes to prove how insane this event was. I'm speaking naturally of the 1943 bronze or more commonly known as the 1943 copper cent. As most people will already be aware, these coins were minted completely by accident in 1943 when the penny was supposed to be struck from zinc coated steel to save copper for the ongoing war effort. Estimates of the surviving examples for this coin vary wildly but at least 12 coins seem likely with 19 grading events in the total population report not accounting for resubmissions. This specimen is from the Simpson collection and graded AU58 by PCGS. It managed to sell for $252,000. Oh, and as if that wasn't quite enough, another 1943 penny struck from a bronze planchette was also on offer. This time it was from the San Francisco mint bearing the S mint mark just below the date. Now, Interestingly, this coin is even scarcer than the Philadelphia Mint coin, with only 6 to 8 coins known today. This was the Kenneth Wing specimen that was authenticated by NGC at AU53 Brown and on this occasion raised $216,000. Obscure subgenres in numismatics go, the Washington coins can be a particularly interesting one. Last year I made a video about the unique Washington President gold coin, so check that out if you feel like it. But what we have here today is a silver 50 cent pattern coin with a large eagle reverse design. Only five such coins can be confirmed to exist today, two of which are in permanent institutional collections and this one being a former extract from the Eric P. Newman collection. Graded as XF details due to some barely noticeable pen scratches by NGC, the coin sold at auction for $144,000. And then how can I show one of the Washington coins and not even mention the outstanding Washington Roman head scent that was also on offer. These were actually struck in Birmingham in England from dyes prepared by John Gregory Hancock. Now knowing Washington's feelings about not having contemporary presidents portraits appear on coinage for fear of creating a type of a unintentional American monarchy, he must have this buys this coin, if he was aware of it, that manages to style him as a Roman emperor of sorts. Graded by PCGS as proof 65 brown, this coin sold for $87,000. $1,000. And then a slightly more modern coin is this 1916 Buffalo Nickel graded as MS63 from NGC. Now as nice as that is in its own right, I'm sure that the more astute have already noticed that there is something a little bit extra about this coin. Yes, that is right, this is a double die obvious variety. The date and the effigy show extensive doubling all throughout, including on the feathers, throat and chin. It is truly one of the most sought after buffalo nickel varieties and then small surprise that this coin managed to close for a hundred and five thousand dollars. And I'm going to have to force myself to stop right there. If I don't, I could easily just keep talking about this sale for probably another hour. I mean, I haven't even touched on the immune Columbia coins, the Bachelor or Mormon dollars, the Excelsior coppers and the numerous varieties or well, I mean, you get the idea. Subscribe to WNN and activate that little bell icon so you'll be notified when new videos are released. For the world numismatic news, I am Numisman saying thank you for watching, keep collecting and have a great day.